Hello, this is Serena Di Cecilia and I'm the European Application Scientist for Flojo. And today I will show you the graph window and how to perform and create gates. If I want to open up a graph window, I will just double click on a sample. When a graph window opens up, I will have the information of the name of the sample and the gate just on top of it. On the top left corner, I will have all the options to perform and create the gate. While on the top right corner, I will have the options to navigate through the samples or undo or redo an action. On Y and X axis, I will find the parameter that I want to visualize into my plot. And I can just click on one of them and select a different one. I will also find the option to transform the axis by clicking on the T and having shortcuts to have linear axis or logarithm axis to reset the axis or manage a customized axis. I will just start performing my gate by starting from an elliptic gate. So I can click on it and design my draw my gate. So I can click on it and draw my gate. And whenever I have a side scatter versus forward scatter parameter, the suggestion from Flojo will be lymphocytes. If the name of the gate is correct, you can click on OK. Otherwise, you can delete what's inside the field and type in any other name. You can add it to favorites or you can remove it if the name of the gate is a name that you don't use that often. I can click on OK and then I can eventually adjust my gate and moving it around. If I want to open up a second graph window, and see what, what is present into the gate, I can double click in the gate. And in this case, I will select different parameters, for example, to exclude doublets. I can perform a polygon gate and having more freedom of creating my gate. And I can just click around the population. And if I will double click on the gate, it will close automatically. In this case that I have forward high versus forward area, Flojo will suggest me that these are single cells. I'm okay with that. And I will just click on okay. And even in this case, I can adjust my gate and make it tighter or moving it around. If I open up a third graph window, I can select different parameters, for example, DR versus CD3. And in this case, I will have several options of creating a gate. I can select a rectangle gate, give it a name. If I want to undo, I will just click on the red arrow. Or I can select the code gate, which will divide the plot in four different square, and I can move around the arms. I can select the pen gate just by drawing around the population. Or I can select an automatic gate that will be based on density according to how I move the mouse around my population. Another option will be the curly gate that will take in account also the spread. Or I can finally select a spider plot where I set the center and then I can move around the arms and adjust it to my needs. I will just proceed by creating a polygon gate, for example, in this case. And call my population CD3. And when I am at this state, I can select a different visualization of the plot by clicking on options. So I can have a pseudo color, which is shown right here, that identifies the more dense areas with red and orange, middle density area with yellow, and low density area with green and blue. Or I can select a contour plot that will draw circles around my population. I can um, select 
the level of outliers. I can show outliers. For example, or I can use a zebra plot, which is a mix be between a contour and a pseudo color. I can also change the color eventually. I can select the smoothing and I can choose to see or not the outliers. The next option would be, for example, a heat map statistics, where I can add a third parameter to my plot and select the third parameter that I want to see into my color map axis checkbox. For example, I can choose perforin or any other marker. A different option is a dot plot, where you can choose the number of events to show right here or you can select a different color for the cells and so on. If I have one parameter to show on the plot, I can select also histograms or CDF. So I will just go back to my pseudo color without smoothing. And within my active gate window, if I select the gate, I can choose to see the events inside the gate or the events outside the gate. The difference will be when I have selected inside events inside the gates, if I double click on it, we'll see what is inside the gate. While if I select, if I deselect events inside, I will see what's outside of my gate. I can also make this gate magnetic. So if I move my gate, the gate will automatically move to the more dense and closer population and I will see the distance from where the gate was designed by the length of this arrow right here. In the statistic tab, I can select and um, choose to add statistics, for example. So I can click on the statistic sign and decide to add, for example, a median within a specific population of a specific marker. If you go on your top bar and click on graph, you can select several options as duplicate view, transpose axis, or you can manually enter a gate, for example, by entering the upper and lower limits in each dimension to define a new population. You can also increase the size the gate of the gate or decrease the size of the gate. And in this play, you can select what's inside the plot as for example, showing a grid or drawing large dots. You can also ask the software to show median or uncompensated parameters if you have different parameters or the even number parameter. If you want to apply a gating strategy to the entire group, you can select the entire gating strategy and all the gates, and then click on workspace and copy analysis to group. This way, when all the samples will have the same gate, you can then navigate through the samples and look at the different gates. If you wanna close up a graph window, just click on the X and if you want to close them all together, click on the graph window and then command alt W. Thank you for watching this on Flojo University and I'll see you next time.